Life insurance. You know, when we're young, we don't have a lot in assets. We maybe have kids at the home. Life insurance seems to be something that we're very interested in, right? But as we get older and we've accumulated some assets, maybe not so much. Well, today, Mike Reese is going to be joining us, and he's going to be sharing with us maybe where there's some benefits to life insurance that you may never even have thought of. So stay tuned. Retiring well, helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring well, where we believe your best is yet to come. Welcome to Retiring Well. I'm your host, Michael Reese, and I'll tell you what, I love today's show. We are talking about life insurance and how people who are retired use life insurance to benefit their planning. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember, you know, I'm a certified financial planner. I remember even in earlier classes, sometimes there was this old adage out there where it would be, all right, once you're, you know, once you get into retirement, you don't have minor children anymore or anything, the mortgage is paid off. You know, you're retired, you don't really need life insurance anymore. So it's time to get rid of that life insurance. You just don't need it, let's get rid of it. Cash it in, whatever you got. Now, that was great. However, and one of the things I learned in my certified financial planning classes is that's very short-sighted because there's a lot of reasons that life insurance actually is a terrific asset to hold during retirement. And we're gonna talk about, you know, right now at least three reasons why that's the case. Okay, so number one, one good reason is if you're married, there is no better asset to leave your surviving spouse when you die. I mean, think about it. You die, your surviving spouse suddenly gets a tax-free lump sum of money. Man, he or she, we'll call, we'll say it's a she because, you know, us, us men, we don't usually live as long. So let's say uh, your wife survives you. She gets this big old tax-free lump sum of money of cash. She can use that to uh, replace some lost income. She can use that to maybe convert IRAs to Roth IRAs. If she wants to do some gifting to the children, she could use it for that. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that she could use that tax-free lump sum of cash and I promise you this, from a financial perspective, nothing is better than a big old tax-free lump sum of cash when somebody dies, uh, at least insofar as the financial side goes. All right, how about reason number two to hold life insurance during retirement? I'll tell you what it is, it's all the rage these days, it's long-term care planning. Some of the best long-term care plans right now are held on life insurance chassis or in a life insurance contract. And essentially, what happens is you have your life insurance. If you need long-term care, it pays out a benefit, but if you don't, hey, you get all your money back and then some through the death benefit. In other words, it's not a use it or lose it approach for long-term care. People in retirement seem to really like that type of structure. How about reason number three? to hold life insurance during retirement? Well, it has to do with leaving a legacy to children, grandchildren, or charities. You know, a lot of people we talk to, they say, here's what they tell us. They say, I wanna live my retirement, and I wanna live my retirement to the fullest, right? You wanna have a terrific retirement. And it's okay if you spend all your money down during those years. If you die and leave your kids nothing, that's okay. We hear it all the time. But at the same time, it would be nice to leave them something. We just don't want to change our lifestyle to leave them that something. Well, if you held life insurance, you could spend down all of your money that you wanted to, knowing that at the end of the day when you die, that life insurance kicks in a big old death benefit to your children, grandchildren. It's especially cool when you combine life insurance with charities. There are a lot of cool things you can do there. So there's three, surviving spouse, uh, long-term care, and children, grandchildren, charities. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bonus, all right? So here we go. Bonus reason to use life insurance during retirement, IRA rollouts. One of the toughest things about retirement is IRAs. A lot of people have a lot of money in IRAs, big taxable accounts. But what happens is how do we, the question is usually, how do we move money from IRA into tax-free accounts 
and do so in a cost-effective way. If you do it right using life insurance, you can roll from, IRA, or from those IRA taxable accounts to tax-free life insurance and when all is said and done, you can get the insurance company to pay the tax on that transition for you. I'll tell you what, if you're not looking at that as an option with your planning, you're really missing out. There's some really neat things you can do there. So there you go, folks. Uh, life insurance during retirement. A lot of good reasons to use it. And I don't want you going anywhere because as we continue on in the show, we are going to dive in and explore the different benefits that life insurance can have with your retirement planning. Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors, specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the new Tax Reform Act, the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standard of care, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, how two similar portfolios can end up with two drastically different results, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, April 16th at Big Buck Brewery in Gaylord, or Wednesday, April 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825 today. Welcome to Chalk Talk. This week we are looking at the different uses of life insurance with retirement planning. And what we're going to talk about in this session is IRAs and comparing the concept of doing a Roth conversion versus doing something called an IRA rollout into uh, certain types of life insurance. So this is, gonna, I think you're really going to like this. So here in our example, we have a $500,000 IRA. So right here, 500K. Now it's very common in our practice and you know, with a lot of tax planners, it's very common for us to take a look at converting uh, portions, if not all of that 500,000 over a period of time into a Roth IRA. And the benefit is what? You get it over here to a Roth IRA, Everything is, of course, tax-free. We love tax-free. Best two words on the planet as far as we are concerned here at Retiring Well. Now, what is the disadvantage to doing a Roth conversion? Well, the disadvantage is you're going to pay tax on the amount of money that you convert over into that Roth environment. If you take 100,000 of this and put it over into a Roth, you're going to owe tax on 100,000 of income. And you're never gonna get that tax back. That's just how it's gonna be. Now, let's take a look at using life insurance as an option inside, uh, instead of a Roth, what if we, instead of putting the 100000 over here in a Roth conversion, what if instead we took that same amount of money and we put it into specially designed life insurance? Now, what's interesting is we're still going to have to pay tax on that 100000 that we took out of the IRA, right? We're still going to owe tax on 100 k call it 30000 or 25000 whatever it is. But what's interesting is whatever's left over gets invested inside that life insurance contract. 
Up here with a Roth, when you do a Roth conversion, you know, you convert 100,000, you give 25, 30 to the IRS, there's, you know, 70, 75 left over, you invest it in a Roth IRA into, you know, various investments. Same thing's happening, but this time, instead of at a Roth, it's at a life insurance company. But here's what's interesting. If you do this the right way, just like a Roth, everything in the life insurance is also tax-free. Again, assuming you follow the rules, right? So here we've got tax-free investments. Here we've got tax-free investments. Essentially, we've done the same thing. There's not much of a difference here. Ah, there's one really important difference though. That life insurance has something called a tax-free death benefit. Death benefit. And that death benefit might be twice the amount of money you put in there. You put in 75K, the death benefit might be 150K or something like that. What does that really mean though? What it means is this. Time goes on. Maybe you've pulled money out of these accounts, tax-free, that's fine. But someday out there, you're gonna die. We all know that. The minute you die, what happens? From here, a death benefit is paid. When you, if you die with money in a Roth IRA, you, let's say you die, there's 200,000 in your Roth IRA. How much do you get? How much does your family get? 200,000. But if you die and there's 200,000 of life in, in cash value and life insurance, what's your family get? They might get three or 400,000 tax free. And guess what you, guess what that extra money essentially does? Has, when that extra money comes in and it pays your family, isn't that extra money more than the tax that you ever paid when you did that, you took the money out when you did that rollover? In other words, using life insurance is kind of like doing a Roth conversion, but you've got the insurance company through the death benefit paying the tax for you to do that conversion. How cool is that? Right? I mean, think about that. How cool is that? The insurance company's paying the tax. You're not. It's like you pay it initially, but they'll pay you back and then some. Kind of a very interesting deal. So anytime you're in a position where you're looking at doing maybe like a Roth conversion, if you're insurable, you should also take a look at these insurance plans because there might be a nice little strategy there to help you retire well. If you're retiring soon, it's likely you have many decisions ahead of you. One of the larger ones is Social Security. How are you gonna take it? Are you gonna take it early? Are you gonna take it at your full retirement age? Or maybe even delay it? Social Security needs to be viewed as an asset. If you live a long life, it's likely you can collect a large sum of money over time with those payments directed to you. How though folks misjudge Social Security commonly is how it's taxed. How are you gonna pay tax on that for the rest of your life? And it's important to factor that in when to take it. And also paired with your other assets you may have, it may make great differences as well. If you don't have a Social Security tax plan built into your retirement, it's extremely important and could cost you thousands over your lifetime if done improperly. We would love to sit down with you here at Centennial Wealth Advisory and talk through what that looks like on a larger scale and see if we can help you have a successful retirement. Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors, specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the new Tax Reform Act, the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standard of care, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, how two similar portfolios can end up with two drastically different results, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. 
Tuesday, April 16th at Big Buck Brewery in Gaylord, or Wednesday, April 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825 today. Welcome back. This week we've been talking about life insurance and how it's a great asset to hold during retirement. What we haven't talked about though today is a really interesting way to use life insurance that a ton of people are using, but I don't think we talk about enough. And it has to do with something called single premium life as an alternative to holding cash. So let's talk about this for a minute. What is the problem today with holding cash? You know, we've got a lot of clients that are holding a lot of money in cash. And in fact, I had one just the other day came to me, he said, Mike, I'm sitting on over hundred grand sitting in cash and just sitting at the bank. And I asked him, I said, Tom, how long has that money been at the bank? And you know what he told me? Oh gosh, forever, right? I mean, it's like, it's there for an emergency, but gosh, I don't really, I don't expect to use it. It's just there as kind of my emergency money. And what do you think his frustration was with the cash that he held at the bank? What was, he, what, what was his frustration? Well, you know what it was. It wasn't paying anything. In fact, he told me, he goes, yeah, I've even been going online, look at these online banks to try to get, you know, get close to 1%. He goes, it's ridiculous how you don't make any money in these banks. It's, it's like almost I got to pay them to hold on to my cash. And yeah, he's true. I mean, the way interest rates are today, liquid cash at the bank, it doesn't make any money. On top of that, I mean, think about this. I said, well, gee, Tom, if you need long-term care, how much money at the bank there do you have uh, to pay for long-term care? He goes, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you got 100 grand in the bank. You have long-term care, how much, at the bank, how much does the bank give you to pay for long-term care? He goes, just the 100,000 I have there. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, Tom, when you die, how much of that 100,000 goes to your spouse and to your kids if your spouse dies first? Well, Mike, duh, 100 grand. He, and at this point, he's looking at me kind of stupid, right? Like, Mike, you're an idiot. And, you know, I probably imagine you're thinking the same thing right now. But then, wait a minute. I said, now, hold on. So if you hold your 100,000 at the bank, as I understand it, it's liquid. You have access to that money at any time, correct? Yes. And you, but you never use it, but it's there if you need it, correct? Yes. And if you need long-term care, you got 100,000. Yes. And if you die, your spouse or your children get 100,000. Yes. Okay, I got it. I said, well, now here's something interesting. What if you took that same $100,000 and instead of holding it at the bank, what if you put it in one of these single pay life insurance contracts? So instead of the bank holding your 100,000, now the insurance company holds your 100,000. What happens then? Well, in his case, here's, what worked, here's how it worked out. First, just like the bank, his 100,000 was 100% liquid. Meaning, if he wants the money, bang, he can get at it, no problem. Uh, the difference is that the bank, he can probably go, I don't know, pull, I don't know that you can pull 100,000 cash out anytime. I don't know anybody would, but I mean, he could write a check or something. He might have to wait a week from the insurance company, but you know, they're both liquid. They can get, he can get at that money whenever he needs it. But how about this? What if he needs long-term care? Well, now instead of having 100,000 to pay for long-term care, the insurance company says, you know what, Tom, if you need long-term care, we'll give you more like 150,000. What if, what if he dies? What does his wife get or his children? Well, instead of 100,000, they make you like 150,000. In other words, the money's still liquid, but there's more for long-term care and there's more for life insurance, but oh, oh wait, what was the number one reason Tom was unhappy with money at the bank? What was that again? Oh yeah, it doesn't pay him any interest. Well, what if this single pay life insurance plan, while giving him all this other stuff, 
also paid him typically over time, you know, three, four, five percent a year interest. What about then? So bank, hundred thousand, earns nothing, gives no benefit for a death benefit or long-term care. Insurance company, same hundred thousand, same liquidity, but now it's paying him maybe four percent a year. And in the event that he dies or he needs long-term care, he gets an extra 50K. What do you think, Tom? Bank, insurance, which one you want? What's the downside of the insurance? You gotta qualify. You have to go through a medical exam. That's it, as long as you qualify, you get all those benefits. That was an easy decision for Tom. Has your advisor talked to you about that? Maybe they should. Pretty cool way to own some life insurance, isn't it? Are you an employee who is participating in a 401k plan? Are you aware that in some cases you might be able to roll out of the plan even though you are still working? Are you tired of the choices you have and possibly the lack of professional help in getting you to your retirement goals? If you're looking for an alternative approach to help you protect your hard-earned retirement savings, then we might be able to help. You may be entitled to an in-service rollover of your 401k plan. A rollover to a self-directed IRA may be an appropriate solution for you. Contact us at Centennial Wealth Advisory today. Take control of your retirement. Centennial Wealth Advisory can help. Please call the number on your screen. Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the new Tax Reform Act, the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standard of care, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, how two similar portfolios can end up with two drastically different results, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, April 16th at Big Buck Brewery in Gaylord or Wednesday, April 17th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825 today. Thank you for joining us again today. Uh, my name is Art Canfield. I'm here with John Torbett. And uh, today we're going to continue the conversation talking about the uses of life insurance in retirement planning. Now, obviously, life insurance, um, a lot of different uses throughout your whole life, really, for that. But we're going to specifically talk about how that can be used in retirement planning. Yeah, and it makes me think of a case recently, Art, where we were talking about these, these folks, they were fortunate enough to have a significant amount in their IRA accounts where they, they said, okay, this is, this is going to be an issue as time moves along. And if one of us were to pass away, we recognize there's going to be a significant amount of taxes that we're going to pay on this over time. And so we ultimately looked at, okay, how can we maybe transition some of this money out of the IRAs and, and do it in a tax-free uh, way? And so it was ultimately using life insurance where we set up life insurance policies for each of them and they were drawing money out just on a regular basis out of the IRAs to fund this type of life insurance where um, it, one, it provides that tax-free death benefit, but then a big thing too that a lot of these life insurance policies will do today when you, when you find the right ones is they'll provide some long-term care benefits as well. So it's a pretty interesting way to, to look at not just covering IRAs, but how life insurance can actually be a part of the overall plan. Right, and so a lot of people I think when you get 
to a certain age, this idea that you don't need life insurance anymore. Right. And, and for the most part, some of the reasons why maybe you and I would have life insurance too, if, if you or I passed away and wanted to provide for our kids, stuff like that, right. a lot of that now isn't necessarily true for people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever it may be. And so the, the focus changes a little bit, and that's kind of what yep. you're saying. The example you give where the, the couple had this kind of, they were fortunate to have a big IRA, was gonna have kind of what we call a tax bomb on if one of them passed away and using life insurance to efficiently transition some money out if one of them was to pass away. Yeah, and I think of another case that I'm working with a client on right now where they're, they're ultimately, it's a second marriage, and so their concern is, is primarily to make sure that their, their spouse is gonna be well taken care of when they're gone, and, and in this case, he's a little bit older than she is, and so um, he's wanting to basically have that comfort level of knowing, okay, if I were to draw down my retirement accounts, then I want to make sure that this lump sum is left behind. And so again, where life insurance plays a valuable as a valuable tool at that time. And the big thing with that is you want to make sure that you structure that that type of policy correctly because you can get into trouble if not. Right? right. And also too, the types of life insurances are going to be different from the life insurance you're getting when you're 30 to where yeah, you're right. 60 too. Because uh, you know if you get a 20 year term policy, let's say, and you live past 20 years, yeah. it's not going to be so good. Right. So and and that's where there's there's ways where you can do it where it's just a level amount and there's a set death benefit amount. So you don't have any surprises or anything. That's really the big thing that you want to avoid when it comes to retirement planning. You don't want those big surprises. Sure. And we've had some other cases I know kind of a, where, you know, a, a couple either, whether it was a child or grandchild, they really had it set in their mind they wanted to leave a set amount behind, mm -hmm. whether that was 10000 or more or less. I mean, they, they were really concerned that, okay, how do I know how much money I can spend but still leave this money sure. behind? Well, having some sort of life insurance policy in place is one way to legacy plan to yep. be able to allow that to happen. And it's surprising, too. I mean, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm, you know, especially when it comes to retirement, they say, oh, I'm, I'm too old or, um, no, I had, you know, this cholesterol issue yeah, or whatever. Too expensive. Too expensive yeah. and everything. And surprisingly, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's an insurance company. They're looking at your average life expectancy and what the costs may be, um, and and they they set it where it can it can make financial sense for you um, to set that up as part of the overall plan. Right, and I think you know just like everything we talk about, the importance is is really just coming in, getting that second opinion about it. Whether you have it or don't have it, it may or may not make sense to have it in right. your plan. Right, and that's and that's really the big thing is I mean a lot of we're bringing up examples today where that may be the minority that we're that we're talking about but it's where each each and every individual couple's situation is a little bit different and it's understanding exactly you know what what they're trying to accomplish and then it's our job to make sure that we match up uh, those goals with the appropriate tools well if John and I have something that we've said is interest to you or maybe you have an existing life insurance policy you would like reviewed or think of something that we said that might be of interest to you please give us a call uh, call the number on the screen we'd be happy to talk through this with you and sit down and see if this makes sense for you and your family Thanks for joining us and have a great week.